Betsy, why don't you take it over? For those of you who were not with us earlier in the day and you recognize this young lady, uh, <laughs> Betsy Kling was with us quite a while ago. We loved her, we love her, and uh, she left her husband and her two beautiful princesses. <laughs> and she, has you, have you slept at all? Yeah, a any, little bit. Any, Anyhow, but Betsy is here, and, and Betsy is going to talk about a pretty serious situation, and that is the fact that we know some of our creeks and rivers are going to flood. Yeah. Betsy is going to cover that. Well, keep in mind, all of the wind, all of the rain are coming on shore. So what that does is it backs up all the drainage. Anything that flows toward the ocean, which is basically everything, will be backed up because the water is pushing in with the high winds. So if you've seen some of the live shots that we've had earlier today, you may have noticed that uh, when we had live shots of what's going on in downtown Jacksonville, the water's going the wrong way. It's going over toward Avondale. That's the wrong direction. It needs to go out and that won't happen until we get into the day tomorrow. So as far as how much rain has fallen, we have certainly had quite a bit. And as uh, we kind of track this for you here, where you see this purple color, that's three to six inches of rain in the last 12 hours. This is a 12 hour rainfall estimate on the radar. And you can see we've got all these little purple spots. Now keep in mind, what falls in one area will then trickle down and in all of our drainage areas around here, it eventually makes its way into the major tributaries of the St. John's and then eventually makes it out to the first coast and into the ocean. So if we take a look at uh, some of the river gauges around the area, let's do this real quick. Uh, we can first start out here at Mayport. Now this is from the National Weather Service. These are the river gauges. This is how everything is gauged. And you can see the ebb and flow of the tide. That's normal. But what you notice is that the overall trend is rising. And remember, Tim keeps pointing to the next high tide, that 2 a.m. high tide, as being the critical one. They didn't even put a forecast on it, but we know that the water is coming up. We know that the water is pushing in from the ocean. And so our high tide will continue to push this river gauge higher. Moderate flooding, just to four and a half feet or so, uh, happens right back here. So the last high tide, we had moderate flooding. Now the next high tide, we could be up to the major flooding. And then once we get the wind change that will be coming late tonight into the day tomorrow, that'll turn everything around and we'll begin draining out. Mayport will be one of the last ones to drain out simply because that's the where all the water is going to end up flowing to. Downtown Jacksonville, also here on the St. John's uh, at the Main Street Bridge, you can see again, there's the ebb and flow, not quite as pronounced as what we have out at the ocean side. But uh, in the last high tide, we came up into flood stage and we've stayed in flood stage. And you may have seen some of the live shots from downtown, uh, down at the landing and whatnot, that the water has come up onto the sidewalks. There's a lot of water around. And one of the reporters said, oh, it looks like the water has receded. It's not, it's just low tide. So now the water is going to be coming back up. But again, we are projecting that to get back into moderate and possibly uh, major flood stage over the next 12 hours as we continue to have all this water draining into the St. John's. The, one of the ones that we're concerned about too is out here in McClenny, the St. Mary's River. Look at the projected rise in the water. Now remember, we are getting a lot of heavy rain. The inland rain has been falling on areas that were super saturated over the summer. You could see the water levels actually were dropping and then now that rain is pushing those water levels up and they are projecting the National Weather Service hydrologists are projecting a major flood on the St. Mary's near McClenny. So uh, there has been previous flooding up to this. This is not a record flood, but certainly this is concerning. So if you are prone to flooding when the St. Mary's floods, uh, certainly you have high water coming your way. It's going to peak probably once we get toward uh, ne early next week, maybe Wednesday or so and then finally start to back off once we get into the latter part of the week. Farther to the southwest, and then, uh, you know, we're going to kind of take a look around towards southern portions of Duval County as well, but the Black Creek at Middleburg. This is one of the ones that everybody goes, and certainly you can see the ebb and flow of the tide. It's been nice and low recently, but here comes Irma and look at where we are already at moderate flood stage. This will continue to rise. This tends to be very flashy. Uh, so as we get the inundation with the heavy rain coming down, this may come up very quickly and then you start to add into that ebb and flow. Notice too, we had kind of the sharp rises and falls with the ebb and flow of the tide, but it's not quite as sharp. We have just a general push, a general rise, and that is 
expected to continue as we go through the night as the rain continues to fall. And finally down to Old St. Augustine Road, uh, the Julington Creek. This is another one that tends to be a little problematic at times. It does have a bit of ebb and flow. Of course, it feeds into the St. John's, but you can see that it has generally been on the rise. It's now over three uh, feet, three and a quarter feet, almost three and a half feet. Record is at 4.6 and we're headed for record. Uh, we still have a lot of rain that is going to come to the first coast. So that's